last on Everdark. Balthazar watches the news and realizes that he should be the one making it as Damon's spokesperson. Now we turn to Julian and Damon, enjoying their own aftermath. Episode 122. Location, location, location. In order to comply with YouTube community guidelines, the next section of the podcast has been abridged. Damon pouted harder. You are too dutiful. The public does not need me at the moment. Really? Because Rajani is haunting us. She's been pacing just outside of the hedgerows. I don't think she hovers normally. Julian replied with a grin. The house winter vampire had begun by sauntering, hands crossed at the wrists behind her back, in front of the opening to this private garden. She was now pacing and glancing in meaningfully every few minutes. I think she wants you to tell her what to do, Julian said. You know, take up those kingly duties and reveal your plans for the world. I can only imagine what questions she's getting from everyone. Damon chuckled and hummed contentedly. She is merely nervous. This is something new. And momentous. You haven't listened to the news reports. Julian had been scrolling through the news coverage about the incident the night before. Let me read you some of the headlines. He cleared his throat, even though they were speaking mind to mind. The dead walk. That one is legit, as there were zombies everywhere last night. And some people classify vampires as the undead. Oh, here's a favorite one of mine. Is the end nigh? Damon smiled, but didn't laugh as he said, The end of what the humans supposedly know is over. So, in a way, it is the end of an era of humans generally believing that they are alone. Julian thought that some of the reporters agreed with Damon, but many did not. The serious reporters from the traditional publications were trying to poke holes in what had happened the night before. They were reporting in sobering tones about the possibilities of special effects, hallucinogenic gas, and how the whole incident at the museum could have been an art piece gone wrong or a terrorist attack gone terribly right. Though they were having trouble thinking that any terrorist group would think the mass deaths of the rich and powerful would aid their cause in believing imaginary vampires were real. Julian continued. <laughs> oh, here's a good one. Hoax, vampire king, fake news. Damon frowned. Was everything else real and only me fake? Julian shook his head. No. They just can't believe, no matter what evidence is put in front of them, including forensic evidence showing corpses really were walking on the museum's campus, that vampires are real. They're simply denying everything. I see. Yes, that is expected. Damon replied with equanimity. But soon enough, there will be some who will seek out vampires to try and be turned. Right now, they are simply reacting to the power structure they know and are a part of being threatened. One of the buds on Damon's shoulder slowly bloomed. It was a blood-red rose. The sweet scent of its perfume wafted over to Julian then and his nostrils flared. One down. Just a few dozen more to go. Julian scrolled further on his phone. Oh, here's one you'll like. It's very sober and takes what we did last night seriously. Religious implication of the existence of vampires. Ah. Damon's eyes were still closed, but his whole face lit up. What does that say? Julian read through it quickly. Basically, it says that the existence of vampires threatens every religion, because the basis of most religions is being rewarded in an afterlife. But if you can be rich, powerful, and eternally youthful in this life, why wait for the next that might not even be there? Even knowing what he did about their being souls and seemingly some place for them to go, Julian couldn't see giving up his second life that was so incredible for the unknown. But then again, he had Damon, Christian, Balthazar, and the others. He might even get his parents back. But people who weren't that lucky might want to see what was next. Callie's experience with humans who learned about our existence not to mention the Kali gift, showed a different outcome, Damon said with a slight frown. The next section of the podcast has been abridged. Ooh, this headline's positive. If vampires exist, can I join them? Damon snorted. But of course, there will be so many who want to join our ranks. We shall have to put into place some kind of formalized structure. Otherwise, we will be overrun with vampires. Perhaps, perhaps a test. 
a series of tests, or even a school, a vampire academy. It was Julian's turn to snort. <laughs> and who would be the headmaster there? Oh, let me guess, Kamorn? Damon was silent. Julian blinked as he repeated, Kamorn? Are you kidding? He hates people. No, he just believes that people hate him. So he hates them before they have a chance. Damon corrected what he did to your parents. It's okay. I mean, it's not okay, but I know why he did it. He didn't have much choice. Still, Julian's hand tightened on his phone, causing it to creak. If he can bring them back, I'll forgive him. He will be forever in your debt, Damon replied softly. You think that's good? Julian studied Damon's beautiful face. It was serene. His thoughts were somewhat open to Julian. But Julian felt that this was one of those moments when Damon was seeing something ahead of them that he didn't want to know quite yet. You do? I suppose having a person like Kamorn owe me one is good. Maybe I'll need to use it someday. It'll be more than that. Every single moment he has going forward, which will be far better than his past moments, will be because of you. Damon told him, he will owe everything to you. He will never forget it. Julian drew in a deep breath. The past 16 years of his life had been a bonfire caused by his parents' deaths. Every waking moment, he had been focused on one goal, avenging them. Now things were far more complicated. Kamorn wasn't the villain that he wanted to slay. Callie was closer to that, but they seemed almost mentally ill. Someone that simply had to be stopped, regardless of a personal vendetta. In fact, going after Callie for something personal cheapened the overwhelming need to stop them. He continued to read headlines to distract himself. We've got dueling headlines here. First one, who wants to live forever? Second one, who doesn't want to live forever? Julian sighed. The reports were breathless and the stories were spiraling farther out into every part of human existence, from the everyday of looking for vampires among one's friends, to whether or not God existed because vampires did. Places of religious worship were packed as people were afraid of the dead rising and coming to take the living down with them. Callie was undoubtedly enjoying that greatly. It was the kind of terror that they wanted to sow, though it had backfired when Damon put a kibosh on it and saved everyone. There were many, of course, who saw vampires as simply evil, the same as demons, really. Others thought it was the end of the world. The dead rising was one of the signs of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Damon had sent those dead back to their coffins and mausoleum. Had he put the kibosh on God's plans? Not to mention the fact that Damon looked like an angel, convinced some he was one, while others spoke of how the devil was the fairest of all angel kind. You know, using the name Damon has gotten a lot of people excited in a bad way. Julian informed him. Damon hummed happily. Yes, I know. Julian shifted on the bench. What other names do you have? So many. You aren't going to tell me, are you? Julian narrowed his eyes. Damon grinned. His eyes still closed, though. It'll be more fun for you to figure it out than for me to tell you. Julian was going to object, but then he realized that Damon was right. Investigating mysteries was his and Christian's thing. It was his parents' thing, too, which brought him back to a subject that had him ready to get up and start pacing like Rajani. Callie won't destroy the soul gems containing my parents' souls, right? Julian had asked this a dozen times already. He was fully expecting Damon to get sick of answering it. But each time he assured Julian, some of the worry eased. I mean, Callie knows that things have gone badly, beyond just what happened at the museum. Won't they be desperate? Damon showed no sign of impatience with him, though, as he answered again. No, they are the only thing Callie has left of any consequence. Destroying them would be most unwise. In fact, this, in fact, was new. Julian sat up straighter. In fact, Julian prodded. A larger smile appeared on Damon's face. Just that all will be well. I know it is hard for you to trust me or anyone on this, but try. I trust you with everything, Damon. Julian assured him with earnestness. At that moment, all of the remaining buds bloomed. Red and rich and ripe, the sweet scent rolled through the garden. 
intoxicating. And it also meant that Julian could finally touch his master. The next section of the podcast has been abridged. I must commune tonight, Arceus. I ask that you calm our people while I do so. I will have more to say afterwards. Damon had said to the confessor. Of course, my king, it shall be done. Arceus had responded. Um... What is it? Ah, Balthazar. He has returned and is worried about his performance with Kali. Damon guessed, or more likely knew. Yes, my king. He is very angry with himself. For all of Balthazar's seeming jadedness, he really does take his duties seriously. Asios explained. And disappointing you is something that he takes with the greatest seriousness. I know, but he did not fail me. I will assure him of that fact, Damon told Arceus, and he had, in great detail as he prepared to commune. But Balthazar was still upset and wouldn't accept he hadn't messed everything up. Even when Damon sent Seer to him, Balthazar had evidently listened and nodded, but still looked like a squashed puppy, according to Sophia's thoughts. Not even Christian or Mephi could lift his spirits. When they had left their suite, the vampires had already cleared out. They'd even kept their distance until Rajani had showed up to pace and look. But considering the pressure on her to keep everything together, Julian thought she was demonstrating great restraint. It was also clear that Arceus had a lot of sway, that he was keeping everyone else back. But Julian knew that they were truly pushing things. Tension was thick, even in their little area of the garden. Julian sensed it from every vampire and even the human world beyond this slice of paradise. So, I'm gonna go speak to the troops. The communing is over, Julian said, half sad to lose Damon to leadership things while at the same time curious himself as to what the vampire king intended the next steps to be. Not quite yet. The next section of the podcast has been abridged. Then they heard a mew and Balthazar. Oh, dear. Well, I should have sensed this. Balthazar was laughing. Not repentant at all. But it is important. Yes, yes, Rajani, I know you tried to tell me. But they'll really want to know this. There was another mew. Mephi, everything is fine. But I don't think Damon wants to pet you right now, Balthazar said. Julian, whose eyes had closed and whose cheek was resting on Damon's shoulder, said, This seriously better be like world-ending stuff, Balthazar. Oh, yes, well, it is my one, Damon said as he carded his fingers through Julian's damp hair. They've found out where your parents are. Julian's eyelids flew open and he twisted around to look at Balthazar. And I've done other things as well. Arranged things. Balthazar said from the entrance to the private area of the garden. I'm on top of things. Balthazar, are you serious? You know where my parents' soul gems are? Julian asked. Balthazar gave out a little laugh. Yes, well, it turns out that it was a good thing that I failed against that bastard Artemis. Seems he might be the only one of the Cali's soul pieces that know where they are. Camorn and Christian have tracked them down. We know exactly where to find them. Join us next time for episode 123, Moonfall. My dearest acolytes, I regret to inform you that this podcast has been edited to conform to this platform's rules and regulations. Obviously, sexy vampire interludes are not appreciated by these plebeians. This episode has been cut to be acceptable to audiences of all ages. Not to worry, if you are interested in hearing the full episode with all the steamy parts included, you can purchase a monthly membership at wraithrain.com. Not ready to commit to a monthly membership? Then please visit the shop at wraithrain.com where the full episodes are available for sale in audiobook format. <laughs>